Hello ladies, well it's the first day of spring today and of course that means every year at this time of the year we're all thinking of spending a good few days giving our house a good airing and our furniture a really good clean and of course that's so important nowadays keeping the furniture in good condition because we can't buy any more um, only those poor people who've been blitzed out of their homes or those lovely newlyweds are able to actually purchase new furniture so we really have to make sure we keep the bugs out of it to protect it and to keep it clean now I do hope the weather's going to be good to drag out those sofas the settee, the armchairs and give them a good beating out in the garden and of course with all the um, fabric and the curtains to clean we really do need good few days of decent weather and it's very difficult to plan of course without weather forecasts anymore I do miss listening to that on the radio I can't wait for the war to be over and we can actually have weather forecasts again. We've just really now got to rely on reading the barometer to try and work out whether it's going to be a good time to start our, our spring cleaning. Now, don't rush into it on a Tuesday after your Monday wash day because we need one good day in the kitchen to prepare and plan uh, for the work we've got ahead. Rushed and scrappy meals, it won't give you the energy you need and of course there's nothing worse than when you're tired and frazzled at the end of a long hard day trying to think of what to eat and prepare meals for the family. Now what you'll need to do is spend a day before you start your spring cleaning cooking as much as you can ahead that will last for the next three or four days and the first thing that you can do on that cooking day is to put on a huge pan of potatoes in their skins and boil them. They'll keep good for at least a couple of days or more. Also, um, put in a big pan of diced vegetables. And with those potatoes, you can mash some of them um, because they'll be really good for those quick meals. Or we can use that mashed potato for quick cakes like those potato rock um, buns. You can also use some of the potatoes in a potato salad to go with other vegetables to make a good salad instead of having cooked hot veg and you can keep some of the potatoes in a jacket stuff them with really healthy fillings and you can eat them cold so that will last you a good couple of days and diced cooked vegetables they're also a very good base for many meals such as this family favorite that i'm going to show you now eggless and making the most of our household milk instead of fresh milk it's also very easy on our precious rations now as you can see i've been grating some cheese four ounces of cheese to be precise so that's where our bodybuilding um, goodness comes into our meal i'm going to grease a large pie dish with my margarine wrapper never throw that away ladies and I'm first of all going to put in the pie dish a pound of mixed cooked vegetables now I've used potatoes carrots parsnips turnips and a little swede so pop that on the bottom and then add one ounce of your grated cheese and sprinkle that over the top of your vegetables pop in a little salt and pepper and then we're ready to make the delicious 
batter to go on top of your vegetables and your cheese. Now take four ounces of flour and to that we're going to add a pinch of salt and also two teaspoons of custard powder. This will help to take the place of the egg that you usually would be using in your batter. So two teaspoons of custard powder to your four ounces of plain flour and that pinch of salt. I'm also then going to add milk. Now I'm not using my precious um, fresh milk for this. Household milk will work just as nicely. So mix up about half a pint. So we're looking at two and a half tablespoons of milk powder sprinkled gradually on top of warm water. Give it a good beat with a fork to mix it all in. But then chill your milk. Don't try using um, warm, just fresh mix household milk. Make sure that you chill it down because the baking powder that we're going to add next will need to be um, added to a cool mixture. Now gradually add in that half a pint of milk as you would usually when making your batter and give it a good beat so that it's lovely and smooth. until you've added all of your household milk, that half a pint mixed up and you're ready to add some more ingredients to this batter. Now the recipe does call for two ounces of cheese out of that four ounces and I'm going to use that now because We've got quite a bit of cheese, but if you're short of cheese, ladies, I think you can probably go down to just one ounce to add to your batter. Mix that in too. And then we're now going to add the two teaspoons of baking powder. Now you'll need to then pour this batter quickly onto your vegetables and cheese in the pie dish. Don't take too long about this ladies, we need to get this in the oven pretty quickly now. So as soon as your baking powder has dissolved into your batter mixture by giving it a good stir, we're going to pour that directly over the vegetables and the cheese mixture in the pie dish. Pop that in and then finally if you've got that cheese to spare that last ounce goes over the top onto the batter. Smooth the batter out making sure it's over all of the vegetables. That last ounce of grated cheese over the top and as soon as you can, as quick as you can, into a moderate oven for about three quarters to an hour. That smells cooked. And there is a delicious, quick and easy vegetable cheese batter. What a lovely supper 
after a hard day spring cleaning.